With the release of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies fastly approaching, in this video we're going over absolutely everything you need to know. Diving into every specific detail in the mode. We're talking weapons, perks, field upgrades, gameplay mechanics, achievements, power-ups, rewards, and so much more. And I actually got to play Zombies early at Triarch. I have exclusive gameplay to share with you all in this video as we dive into everything you need to know gameplay-wise. So let's jump into it, but if you want to see more Zombies and more exclusive gameplay, then you need to subscribe. Starting off firstly with the gameplay experience, the mechanics of the game. Straight away, it's not a round-based mode. It's a combination of Outbreak, but with DMZ mechanics. You will be placed on the open world map Urzikstan, where you'll start every game on the outer edges of the map. As rather than Outbreak or round-based zombies, where every round the zombies get more difficult, certain sections of the map contain higher difficulty enemies than others. So you'll start in what's called a low threat zone, where the zombies will be between round one and round 10 difficulty. Moving into the medium threat zone brings you to round 25 to 35 difficulty zombies with a few zombie bosses thrown in for good measure and then the final middle part of the circle is the high tier zone where zombies are round 55 plus difficulty they'll be super sprinting and they're really really difficult. When you start a game of Modern Warfare 3 zombies you have 45 minutes of in-game time until the ether storm begins to expand on the map. This is an identical mechanic to war zone when the gas starts coming in or D DMZ, where once it starts expanding, you have 15 minutes of time to get to an exfil location and successfully exfil. The whole objective in the game mode is an extraction based game mode where you'll go in, collect loot, complete missions, and then exfil so you can take in the stuff you got from the previous game. You can go back in stronger and able to fully push into the most difficult areas. This is a mode where you won't be able to explore everything within one single game session. Now, since this mode is so similar to DMZ from Modern Warfare 2, then it is to OG zombies, this is not a solo experience. This is a game mode where you'll play in squads of three, but you'll be able to join up with other random squads in the game session to create a team as big as six. However, if you want to run it solo, you can solo queue and have no other teammates, but it might be a bit more of a challenging experience. But the big thing is unlike DMZ, this mode will not have PVP. It is purely a PVE experience. So what is the point of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Well, because it's an extraction based game loop, you're going to be going in, looting up and completing sets of missions and contracts. This will give you loot and rewards to enable you to access more of the game's challenging end game content. Very similar to DMZ, this will be faction style missions, but rather than DMZs where they are pretty one dimensional, these will actually be story based missions with dialogue and conversation between multiple characters. And the story is being told through through three acts and at the end of each act there's going to be a special mission that will transition you out of the big Urzikstan map and place you on a brand new completely separate map created just for this mission which will be a more crafted experience essentially being like a campaign mission but within the zombies mode. And by completing each of these final missions for each act, you're going to be rewarded with a major story development cutscene. Within the general gameplay of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, there's some additional features and changes that they've made, which is different to Black Ops Cold War and Vanguard, such as the fact that when you go down, you will only lose your perks if you completely bleed out. So if you're revived, you'll simply have all of your perks again, which is really great. Unlike Cold War and Vanguard, there is no upgrade perks perk system so there's nothing outside of the game nor do you have to buy this perk multiple times to get any additional benefits these perks will all come with a few of the tier upgrades we saw from cold war straight away which is really really good some other strange things but you might find fascinating is that the game can be played in first person or third person and can be flipped at any time via the main menu settings which is really really interesting there is no perk limit so you can have the full nine perks that are available in this game mode all at once if you have the money to do that. The weapon rarity system from Black Ops Cold War is back being the green, blue, purple and yellow. Like what we've seen in Black Ops Cold War and Vanguard Zombies, this is very much like DMZ when you go into the pre-game. You'll have an operator slot where you'll be able to choose that character as well as choose what sort of vest they're going to be wearing, what lethal and tactical grenades you're going to be taking in, kill streaks, equipment, field upgrades and your primary and secondary weapons which can either be contraband weapons that you've gotten from pre previous games and exfield with 
or using your insured weapon slot where you can choose a specific weapon and kit it out in the creator class and the gunsmith to create the gun that you want to bring in. Just like DMZ, if you die in game with that weapon, it will be on a cooldown in the main menu where you won't be able to bring that in for a set amount of time. Outside of the main story missions, what are the other missions that you can do around the map? Because these are important for gaining points to upgrade your weapons, gain perks, and be able to move from the low threat zone all the way up to the high threat. Now let's talk about contracts, which are going to be littered all over the map as the mini side objectives for you to do. Now this might not be the complete full list, but what we know so far is that there is the ether extractor, a big bounty, cargo delivery, an escort mission, outlast, merc defend, relic hunt, spore control, and weapon stash. Some of these are shared directly from DMZ, such as cargo delivery and weapon stash, which work exactly as they did in those modes where you'd have to simply just deliver cargo to a specific part of the map or weapon stash where you'll be standing around a safe that takes a while to open and you'll be dealing with enemies whilst waiting for it to open. But spore control is a new one where you have to go to a toolbox somewhere on the map and take out this new equipment which you need to throw down near these weird spores that have grown that zombies are attracted to and by throwing down this it sort of fertilizes it and destroys it and there are about five of these that will be within a small contained area that you'll need to take out by throwing down the equipment on to complete that objective. For the Ether Extractor contract, there's simply going to be a load of rockets that are going to spawn in in a certain section of the map and you'll have a time limit in order to get to each of these rockets, overload the Ether Extractors, which will cause them to explode and once you've taken out all five, the objective will be complete. We see a brief snippet of gameplay of the Outlast objective where they have to go to a certain area and activate what's called a PND then they have to remain in the environment while there's analysis on it and I assume zombies will start attacking you. Now that is a lot of different activities you can do within one single game session of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies and the whole point of doing that is that it rewards you with points and it is far easier to earn points by completing objectives than it is to just simply kill zombies because you earn so little points from killing zombies and you're going to need the points in order to upgrade yourselves with the perks and pack a punch. Now completing these objectives also grants you a reward rift which has a chance of giving you some random rewards that are obviously going to help you such as any of the alternate ammo types in the game that we'll get into in a little bit any of the nine perks you can get given for free and you can also get weapon cases containing a wonder weapon so let's now touch on how the Pack-A-Punch works and also how things scale over time in the game within that 45 minutes because each threat zone will contain its own rewards and loot that will scale depending on how difficult that particular area is. The harder the area, the better the rewards are going to be. Just like in Cold War Zombies, we have the weapon rarity system returning and each tier of weapon will scale up in each of the three different zones. And the chances of getting better weapons and higher rarity weapons from the mystery box will increase when you're in a harder zone. Now, Pack-A-Punch is very interesting. There is no setup in order to get it. It is just there on the map and there's going to be one Pack-A-Punch machine in each of the three different threat zones. How this works differently to prior zombies is that you can pack a punch for the first time in the low threat zones pack a punch machine but you cannot use it to pack a punch your gun any further than that in order to upgrade it for the second time you need to use the pack a punch in the medium threat zone and to get it to the highest tier pack a punch you have to use the machine in the high threat zone now the Pack-A-Punch prices have been scaled down a little bit for this game mode. So Pack-A-Punch will cost you 5,000 points for the first tier. It will cost you 10,000 for the second and 15,000 for the third and final tier. Now I'm sure there are contracts that I've missed out in this video, but on top of that, there's also POIs on the map where we have the Ether Storm itself. Then we also have fortresses, strongholds and encampments. So the way these work is that these are all soldier AI occupied areas that escalate in difficulty, starting off with an encampment once you complete that you'll be given a key card to a stronghold once you've cleared that stronghold you'll get a key card to a fortress and inside of the fortress you're going to come across a massively strong ai boss which is called a warlord now according to leakers there are three currently named warlord bosses within modern warfare 3 zombies one being the chemist which is funnily enough a name of a boss within dmz one called the maestro and another called the rainmaker now i have no idea what each of these 
warlords will look like, but I assume that they will all have their own different weapons, their own different abilities that will be used against you that you'll need to counter in order to take them out and to get what will presumably be the best loot out of anything you can get in the game. Outside of these warlords, there are also going to be some special zombies and some boss zombies. So for special zombies, we have the return of the mimics, the disciples, the crancy soldat and the manglers. But as you've seen from the gameplay in the trailer, we have a new variation of the abomination called the mega abomination, which is a three headed version is three times the size of a normal abomination. And if you go inside of a building to try and hide from it, it can actually smoke you out by producing these babies that come out of its stomach to try and kill you, which is very weird. And from the footage looks to be quite a powerful boss to take down. But there is also another secret giant worm boss that we see at the very end of the trailer, which has been hinted to require more than just one tier in order to take down. We don't know exactly how this boss spawns, but from data miners, they found that the name of this thing is called the Gormgant. Now, I'm really excited to learn more about this boss, how it spawns, how we take it down and what the rewards are. But this seems to be a massive world boss. And in theory, you should give us the best rewards once you've taken it down. Now, there are other points of interest around the map that you can choose to do optionally to give you some more rewards, one of them being a ether nest which is a infestation somewhere on the map, be it a small hut or a small building in which you have to go in and destroy all of these different hive nests inside of one spot. You'll need to have a gas mask in order to go in and do these. And as you can see from the gameplay, there's all these sort of weird spores that you're going to need to destroy. And there's going to be some sort of treasure chests within that area, which will only be accessible once you've destroyed all of the spores. And within inside that, you can get yourself some points you can get new schematics and you can get other rewards just like in dmz there is a ton of buy stations which are going to be all over the map which allow you to buy a ton of different loot for you to upgrade your characters such as armor plates kill streaks field equipment, backpacks, armor plate carriers, and more. Well, not only can you use your points here, you can also sell stuff to the buy station to get yourself points. And just like DMZ and the random loot that's scoured around it, there's going to be other random items scoured around the map that you can pick up and take in your backpack and sell later on. And if DMZ is anything to go by, there is going to be some locations that are going to have some really valuable loot that could be worth tens of thousands of dollars that you can sell to a buy station. And you'll easily be able to afford to fully kit yourself out and then spend those points on upgrading yourself with perks and pack a punch. A few side objectives from Outbreak are returning, such as the Purple Orb, which if you spot somewhere on the map and start shooting it, once you've done enough damage, it's going to drop a load of points and then fly around the map, where it will be stationary in another position where you can do that a few times over and it will give you a load of points. Now to traverse around a map this big, there's also the addition of jump pads, which allow you you to jump around different areas of the map, launching you really far across the map. And on top of that, there's also going to be these sort of tear teleporters in the sky, which if you fall into, it will allow you to redeploy at a slightly higher height. Now, there are a few other POI activities, such as a weapon stash contract, a treasure hunt contract, but then there's a few which are currently unknown, which are known as a legacy point of interest and a nexus point of interest. Now, we've got to talk perks because a lot of the Cold War perks are returning, but there are a few that are missing. So in total, we have nine perks. We have Juggernog, Death Perception, Quick Revive, PhD Flopper, Speed Cola, Elemental Pop, Deadshot Daiquiri, Stamina Up, and Tombstone. Most of these work exactly how you'd expect them to, but some have been altered slightly. One of the biggest changes is to the Tombstone Soda perk, where it is a lot more useful, where now if you die out completely, you will drop a Tombstone that you'll be able to recover in your next game of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies to regain your loadout so not even in the same game when you next infill which could be days from that moment you can get everything back from your body phd flopper is in the game now and this is different to phd slider that was in cold war because this is the good old-fashioned phd flopper where if you dolphin dive no matter what gradient of floor you're on will cause your character to create a flopping explosion which is fantastic there's no full damage and you don't take any explosive damage and i can confirm that because i use the ray gun 
and with PhD, it felt really good being able to shoot the floor. A big surprise though is the change to Quick Revive, where it will allow you to revive your teammates faster, but it doesn't regenerate your health quicker like it did in Cold War, at least from our understanding of it from our playtest. Death Perception is also very useful in this game as it allows you to see zombies through walls, but it can also allow you to see objective points through walls as well, making certain parts of an objective that are hidden easier to see. Moving on from perks, let's talk about field upgrades, because again, a lot of the Cold War field upgrades are returning, but two important ones are missing. So here is the full list, and as you can see, both Ring of Fire and Toxic Growth are missing. And we aren't quite sure why, but I think Ring of Fire may be coming later down the line. At least that's what it seemed at Treyarch. So looking at the list on screen, we have Healing Aura, Energy Mine, Lightning Links, Ross Blast, Aether Shroud, and Frenzied Guard. And from my gameplay experience, Healing Aura was absolutely one of the most powerful field upgrades ever because it would heal and revive players from any distance, regardless of where they were on the map. So it was a really crutch way to revive people when they weren't near you and in some of the gameplay you can also see that lightning links is used quite a lot where like a wonder Waffer, it chains lightning up with hordes of zombies creating this prolonged high damage output situation but it is a bit weird to not see ring of fire or toxic growth here on launch maybe they'll be coming later down the line with season updates but we all know ring of fire is just easily the best field upgrade that we've ever seen so maybe it was a bit too overpowered i genuinely don't know but let's talk about alternate ammo types because because these are all returning from Cold War, such as Brain Rot, Cryo Freeze, Dead Wire, Napalm Blast, and Shatter Blast. And rather than getting these from the Pack-a-Punch machine with the sub menu instead of Pack-a-Punching the weapon, these will just be found out in the wild. So when I played, I managed to find both Cryo Freeze and Brain Rot just by completing an objective and getting it from the reward rift that you get from completing each side objective. The data miners have also found the name of another alternate ammo type we've not seen before called the Shadow Vortex ammo type. Not too sure exactly what it means, but if you have any ideas, let me know below. Whilst this isn't a wonder weapon or anything like that, we do have the LT-53 Casimir grenades returning, which are essentially this Dark Aether Universe's version of the Gush device. Now, it wouldn't be a zombies mode if it didn't have wonder weapons, and Modern Warfare Zombies is launching with three wonder weapons on day one. Well, as you can see from the early gameplay, of course, the ray gun is returning. It's a classic zombies wonder weapon staple. It is there. You can get it from the mystery box. You can get it from a weapon case drop, which is a very rare reward to get from completing an objective or from just finding it around the map. You can also find a ray gun schematic, which if you exfil with will allow you to craft a ray gun once every 48 hours before you jump into a game. And it works pretty much exactly how you would expect, although it looks pretty good now on this new engine. We've got another returning Wonder Weapon, which is a surprise to see the Wonder Waffer DG2. And again, you can get it out the mystery box or through any of the other methods that I've mentioned, but the Wonder Waffer feels very similar to the one that was in Vanguard's Shinonuma. And this can also be Pack-a-Punch just like with a ray gun, but it didn't gain any new abilities for doing so. It would just do more damage, have more ammo and have a cool camo. But the most exciting Wonder Weapon is the brand new one, which is called the Scorcher. And this feels like a really unique blend of some of the wonder weapons we've seen in the past like the die shockwave and it's power to blast zombies away but you do have to charge it up a little bit like the paralyzer or the jet gun it works by charging the gun up and then it shoots a blast of energy towards the zombies that completely decimate them purple blast reminds me a little bit of the color of the Sliquifier's goo which i think is just really cool it just looks like a much more slim lined version of the shockwave with the paralyzer and the jet gun which is great but on top of this incredible power, it also has the ability to launch you into the air, allowing you to gain a massive distance away from zombies and enemies when you need a quick getaway. And it's like using one of the launch pads from the moon biodome, like you just go absolutely flying. Let me know what you think of the look of this wonder weapon in the comments below, because it looks dang good. As discussed a moment ago with the ray gun, and not just that, but every wonder weapon, they can be extracted through a new system in the game called acquisitions, which allows you to find something in the world and then be able to take it out with you and bring it in in the following match but this isn't just for wonder weapons such as the ray gun or the wonder waffer or the new scorcher but this is also the same for literally every single perk in the game as well as every single alternate ammo type but it doesn't end there there are other rewards you can take out such as ether tools which allow you to upgrade your weapons rarity a golden armor plate and an ether crystal which 
which will allow you to upgrade the tier of pack-a-punch of your weapon straight away. And alongside that, there is another feature called schematics, where if you discover one of these schematics wild in the game, you'll be able to exfil with it. It will give you the ability to permanently craft one of those acquisitions on a cooldown in the main menu, which means you'll always be able to go create a juggernaut can as an example and bring it in with you so that you can use that thing the moment you start your game meaning that the longer you've invested into playing the mode the more you'll be able to reward yourself and have these bonuses and benefits straight away now outside of all of everything we've discussed with the missions the objectives the pois the different enemy types you can take down one of the biggest grinds in any call of duty release is the weapon camo grind and it's already been confirmed that there is going to be a zombies mastery camo grind we don't know with 100 accuracy how many camos will be specifically for the zombies camo grind but it's looking like it's going to be at least four camos thankfully some content creators at codnex went through the menus and found that there were calling cards referencing the camos in the game while some of them seem to be referencing zombies camos a big shout out to DK Dynamite and his team behind Detonated.com who've done an incredible article breaking down all these camos and I'll have that link down below in the description. They created this image that showcased the calling card camos for what could be the zombies camos including one called Bioluminescent, Spinal Husk, Golden Enigma, Serpentinite, Arachnida, and one that doesn't have a name. We don't know the exact requirements in order to get these camos, but we can assume that they'll be very similar to what we had to do for Black Ops Cold War. And what is very crazy is that with the carry forward feature, we'll be able to grind zombies camos for the MW2 sets of weapons, as well as the Modern Warfare 3 set. Regardless of what mode you're playing for Modern Warfare 3, this is going to be one of the biggest weapon camo grinds in Call of Duty history. We've discussed the field upgrades, we've discussed the alternate ammo types and the perks, but we also need to talk about the fact that there are now score streaks inside of zombies that we saw with Cold War, but are now with a bit of a DMZ element. So we definitely know that the Juggernaut is going to be in here because we see it used at the end of the gameplay against the new Mega Abomination, but we also have a Precision Airstrike strike as well as sentry guns and a cluster strike but interestingly around the map there is also large cannons that you'll be able to use in order to take down the zombies which is not a skill streak but an actual part of the map itself there's also turret traps in certain areas of the map which will require you to find a key in order to use as for power-ups all of the classic zombies power-ups are returning such as the carpenter fire sale double Double points, insta kill, max ammo nuke, but we also have a perk can power up, which will give you a random perk for free power which will give you back your field upgrade bonus points which just gives you points and also an armor vest which will completely repair your armor vest carrier giving you full armor plates at the start of the video i did also mention that there are achievements within modern warfare 3 zombies and we're going to be going over all of them very briefly right now the first one is called and so it begins and to do that you simply need to exfil successfully in modern warfare zombies which you should do on your first or second game the next is back from the dead where you reclaim your gear from a tombstone in modern warfare zombies and we spoke about how tombstone is upgraded and amazing in this game mode the next one is called conqueror which is to defeat a warlord in modern warfare zombies which is the final part multi-stage mini activity where you'll be going through from strongholds to encampments to then fortresses where you'll be taking down one of the main big bosses. Next achievement is Gravestone. In Urzikstan, kill 100 zombies with a vehicle in a single deployment in MWZ. So you can use vehicles and drive around in vehicles in this game mode. So that's pretty straightforward. The next one is Helpful Stranger. Revive a player from a different squad in Modern Warfare. Zombies, Hired Gun, Complete 20 Contracts, 
one against all kill orcus in mw zombies which seems to be some sort of massive big boss fight which could be the name of that big worm that we saw in the trailer or this is a secret boss we know nothing about which is pretty exciting perkaholic which is to have nine perks active at the same time seeing red complete five contracts in the high threat zone in a single deployment slaughterhouse kill 50,000 total enemies right off get 500 kills using an insured weapon you can pet the dog where you simply pet a hellhound in modern warfare zombies meaning we can turn a zombie dog and we can pet it which is really cool and the final achievement is the end complete act three in modern warfare zombies now do i think that's the end of it of course not that's just the end of the launch story missions and there's going to be plenty more of those to come according to data miners there is currently 48 story missions that are going to be available the moment the game launches which is really really cool currently there is 22 missions within the first act 15 missions in act 2 and 11 missions in act 3 a lot of the missions in the first act are going to be very very easy self-explanatory missions that are going to be more as tutorials to get you used to the game modes and mechanics but as it goes on they should be a lot harder and will be a lot more time consuming just like we've seen with dmz these story missions are going to act essentially as this game's version of the main easter egg quest on launch as the traditional main easter egg quest that we've known and love and expect is not going to be here on launch but it will be added at some point later down the line i have teased that there is going to be a lot of side easter eggs and details hidden around the map that we as a community are going to need to find and explore by just playing the game when it launches for the following weeks and months to discover absolutely everything i think that's going to cover literally absolutely everything we know about modern Modern Warfare 3 Zombies gameplay wise so far. If you learned something new, let me know by liking the video and commenting and subscribe so you don't miss out on Modern Warfare 3 Zombies when it launches very soon.